All right, hi everybody. I'm hoping you can see what I've got. Oh, see what I've got going on here and hear me. Um, we've got a couple minutes till the live stream starts officially, but I thought I'd um, hop on and make sure I've got everything going. Oh, great, Linda. Hi, thanks for saying hi. I know I'm set up right. It's been a while since I've done a live stream. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm hoping you guys can hear me. If you guys want to say something, if you can hear me, that would be super helpful for me. Hi, Jen. Jen's going to be, um, Jennifer's going to be here. Anderson's going to be helping you. Oh, great. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> and thank you, Laura, too. Um, Jennifer's going to be helping answer your questions a little bit. So if I don't see him, if I'm not reading fast enough, um, I was hoping to get her on here as an admin as well. And Jennifer, I'm having a hard time figuring that out, unfortunately. <laughs> um, usually I'm pretty good with technology, but apparently I'm a little bit off tonight. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes um, to, a few other people jump on here to get going. Um, this is what I have going for my supplies tonight. Um, these are all things from February's kit. But if you don't have February's kit, it's a great kit. But if you don't happen to have it, um, we can, you can follow along with anything. Additionally, if you've used your pieces that I'm using tonight, swap in for anything else that you want. I've made multiple projects with my kit, so this is what I have um, left over. I have some other papers too, but this is, this is what I picked from what I've got left over. I'll try to, to help you guys um, with some tips on how you can make it work for you. Also, there's a link in the description for this that has the link to the sketch I'm using tonight, too. So you can, if you haven't downloaded it already, you can download it at any point. Um, I think I've got that right, Jen, right? <laughs> they can download it after this, too. It's not going to disappear on you. Um, I just printed it out as kind of a little, uh, it's about a 5x5 five five size but it's a JPEG file, so you should be able to throw it in your photo files or do whatever, anything you want with it, so you've got it for later. Um, all right, so I think we've got a dozen of us hopped on or so now, and I'll get you guys started because I know your nights are busy, and we'll get started on what we've got going on. Um, the adhesive I'm using tonight is glue dots just because, full disclosure, I also um, design for glue dots. So I happen to have lots of their products and like them as well. So that's why I got them out tonight. I have just a flat adhesive. So my regular, what I scrapbook paper to paper with, um, just a tape runner. And then I have some dimensional adhesive. I really, really like using dimensional ad adhesive. It just adds a little something to my layouts, I always feel like. So I've got that. Um, I've got just a grouping of embellishments. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to use until this comes together. So I'm going to move these out of the way for now because we won't need them just yet. Thanks for the extra link to the sketch then there too. Um, I'm going to leave this sketch just kind of up over here as we're referencing it. Then you guys can see what I'm doing. And my light's shining on my picture here a little bit. So I'm going to scooch that out of the way as well. My picture that I'm using tonight just happens to be a 5 by 7 This is my niece and my sister doesn't scrapbook. So I'm going to do a picture of my niece tonight. Um, but the sketch as I kind of originally drew it up works really well with a 4 by 6 photo as well. Um, you can also turn your photo and use a vertical photo for this layout. Um, and if you're really feeling adventurous, you can turn it this way if you have a uh, vertical photo as well. That's what I like with sketches. They're usually pretty versatile. All right. A couple of things I have are my rule, and you'll see how I use that as I get into it. Um, and a file, I'll show you a little trick with that. But otherwise, here are my papers. Um, you need a couple of pattern papers. I'm going to be using these two sort of busier patterns and then a couple of a little bit more neutral ones. I'm going to be using this one 
and I'm going to be using this, this polka dot one, but it is a little bit, um, I'm going to use it twice because on the back side, what I really like about authent these authentic kits, I think October was the last authentic kit. Maybe it was November. Um, we, they have this pattern paper that's, um, a little bit card stocky and, um, it's, it's, striped on one side and polka dot on the other so it's a really subtle all over pattern um, you'll find out i'm a big pattern paper user i rarely use cardstock nothing wrong with using cardstock mile style i just happen to mix and match a lot of pattern papers so to get started um oh and i did see someone say they'd use their washi tape if you don't have any washi don't have any left um you can always swap out just a strip of um pattern paper when i get there all right, I'm using this as my base layer. So when you're looking at this sketch, you've got this kind of just big 12 by 12 white. Um, if you are an eight and a half by 11 scrapbooker, now would be the time I'd cut it down to eight and a half by 11. I would also go with a smaller photo than a five by seven like I'm using tonight. Um, it'll kind of overwhelm the layout, but a four by six, three and a half by five would be great too. So this is gonna be your base. I've trimmed off my bottom edge already on it. Um, I just decided I like the look of it going vertical just because I like it that way. You can also turn this one horizontal if you like it. It's just how I happen to like it. When I work with a lot of pattern papers, I just sort of start by laying them out and seeing what I like. I decided that I really like how this paper complements this one. So I want my next biggest pattern, which is going to be this strip down here to be this pattern because I just really like how this paper goes with these hearts. So that's just sort of my thought process on that. This is where I use my, my ruler sometimes. I like to sort of lay out and I think I want it about here. I know some sketches will give you measurements. I'm a little more loosey-goosey than that. <laughs> so I just lay it out. I kind of go, mm, I think it needs to be about this tall and then I'll measure and I'll go, oh, it's about four inches. So now I'm going to cut a four inch strip of this. Only reminder is that you're going to want to do it so your hearts are facing up and down, not sideways, unless you're going for that look, but it might look a little weird. So uh, give me a second, I'm going to cut that. And now I've got my four inch strip for the bottom. I'm just going to use whatever adhesive you like best flat on flat for this one all right all right so that's my bottom base strip that i'm going to build off of then next i want some stripes from here uh, the only reason I'm not using the washi for these is the washi paper is just slightly smaller than 12 inches long. You can use the washi for it if you want to. Um, remember too, when you use washi, you're going to pick up a little bit of the pattern underneath. I decided that I wanted solid paper on this, and I'm going to use the washi for embellishments probably a little bit later. Um, so I like to start, this one's going to be a little bit wider, this dark one's going to be a little wider, and then I'm going to go a little bit narrower on the one top. My guess for what I'm going to want is that I'm going to want this kind of busy pattern hanging out on the bottom. Oh, no, I, I think I changed my mind on that. I want the um, solid color to be my thicker on the bottom and then a thinner strip of this pattern paper. The reason I'm pulling this pattern in is it'll pull a whole bunch of colors sort of together without overwhelming the photo. So you're, when I add embellishments, I'll have a few more colors kind of to bring in with my embellishments if I want to without, um, had I used this as a background paper, it might overwhelm my photo a little bit since there isn't a lot going on in the photo I'm using since it's kind of just a neutral a photo as well I'm gonna want to not sort of overwhelm that photo if that makes sense so I've got this strip now and if you can see in this layout I sort of offset this um, these two strips here from this bottom strip so I'm gonna want a little bit peeking out on top and then I'm also going to want, I want to use the, I want to I use the polka dot side of this, I believe I decided. Um, 
Sorry, I did a little bit of this ahead of time and cheated. Oh, nope. And I looked ahead of time and decided I wanted my pink. I apologize. I wanted, I tried two things and decided I liked this better. My apologies. So I want this slightly offset from up here. So I'm going to lay that one down. And I'm going to use my stripey side just because. And offset it just a bit from that top. Okay. And then my next strip is going to cover up just the top edge of the strip. When I layer smaller strips of paper, if you butt them up against each other, you get this sort of visual line here and you see it breaks up your patterns a little bit. So what I usually try to do when I'm doing small strips like this is just overlap a little bit and you don't get this same sort of valley that draws your eye to it. It just looks like nice smooth paper layering. Again, that's just my preference. What I love about scrapbooking is there really isn't a wrong way to do it. So you can see how this little strip doesn't have a whole lot to it, but it's adding, pulling in some extra colors for us to use when we get to our um, embellishment phase. All right, so I've got one more strip here. Um, oh, and I my measurements on this, I did about an inch wide on my pink stripes here. And then this pattern paper, I went about a half an inch wide, just a little bit less than that. Again, I'm a little bit of an eyeballer, so I just kind of look at it when I put it in my paper cutter and go, mm, that's about the width I like. I'm going to use the other side of that same piece of paper now. So on this side, it's a stripe, but I'm going to use the polka dot side to do this strip up top now as well. And this one is a half inch strip. Why? That one's a three quarter inch strip. I had to measure that to make sure. It looked a little bit bigger than a half inch. So I don't bump my video camera here. I'm gonna slide this down and put it right on top. All right, so we built sort of the base of our layout. Next, we're going to add our photo on. And you can see there's a little bit of shadow around here. Um, that's sort of an optional layer you can do underneath your photo. I decided I wanted that piece. I'm going to use the same nice bright pink. Since I used the stripe down here, I'm gonna go with the polka dot side. You can go with a different pattern paper there if you want. I sort of played around a little bit ahead of time to see how I wanted to mix and match my papers and nothing else quite felt right to me, but if you're choosing different papers than me, you can certainly pull another color, another pattern. Um, a black would look nice under there in this as well. I used up most of my black from this kit on a different layer than I did, so I know there's some nice uh, grays and blacks in there. Those would work too. Uh, I think it's, nope, one of them, there's a brick colored paper too. That would work under there as well. Now, what I did for this one, because you can see my paper cut slightly underneath and goes off to the sides, but it doesn't reach all the way to the top of my photo. It doesn't, it's not a true photo mat on this. So since my photo is a five by seven, I still did five inches tall because I'm just going to offset it a little bit, but because I want it to poke out from the sides, I did seven and a half inches wide. So if you got a four by six photo, I do four tall plus maybe six and a half wide. If you're not exactly sure, cut a little bit bigger than what you think you might want. You can always trim a little more off. You cannot make your paper bigger once you've cut it. You can get creative with your embellishments, but you can't make your photos bigger. Or you can't make your uh, papers bigger once you're done. So I'm going to layer these up first. And then what I think I want to do here is pull this whole photo and mat up on some dimensional adhesive. I don't like that. You're gonna see me popping this off because I put it together just a little crooked. And it'll drive me a little crazy. All right, so I'm gonna pull up my dimensional adhesive. I've got uh, pop-up dots from Glue Dots. Foam adhesive works well here, whatever you like, whatever your um, preferred adhesive for this kind of thing is. So I'm just going to, I don't want it standing up super, super tall. I just want to give it a bit of a pop 
And so I saw someone say they have snow here. My kids had a snow day today <laughs> because we had snow too. All right, so I just put a little bit of dimensional adhesive in the corners and right in the middle. And again, I'm kind of eyeballing my sketch for where I want to lay these things out. But when you're working with a sketch, it's a suggestion. It doesn't have to be a perfect copy. And so I'm going to just kind of see where I like, where my eye says it looks good as I'm laying it down. Okay, then what you'll get with your dimensional adhesive, I'm going to turn this so you can see it just a little bit, is a little bit of height from your paper when you're looking at it. And it just it's a really nice way to add a little pop to your layers without having to add more paper or more embellishments or more something. All right. Oh, oh hold on. I saw someone's got a frozen picture. I just want to make sure that I'm not frozen for everyone. All right. Looks like most people can see me. So if you're having the weather, we are. <laughs> You might be frozen for that reason. All right. And if it freezes at any point or you get kicked out, um, this video will be available after. Once we log out, you can go back and watch the whole thing. You can fast forward through the parts of me talking about my children if you don't want to hear that. Um, so you can, uh, you can go back and watch the whole thing again and see some of that. This is always the fun part. This is the part where you get to play around with some embellishments. And I had a pile on here because I never quite know what I'm going to use. I have some, I, let's use this one. I have some ideas until, now's the time I run out of adhesive. Um, I always have some ideas, but I never know exactly what I'm gonna use until I start laying stuff together. Cause sometimes you have a piece you think you're really gonna like. Oh, Pat, that's no fair, 80 degrees in Florida, no fair. But you, you don't always know what pieces you think you're going to like a piece, and then you get some pattern papers laid out, and you start to put it, and you go, ooh, nope, nope. So try not to get so caught up on, I have to use this piece of embellishment, or I have to use this paper. Um, I, I get in those head spaces sometimes, and you'll find out you're just going to end up frustrating yourself. So I'm going to pull my embellishments now. These are a mix from the um, upgrade kit from February. I just pulled a little bit of everything and things that I thought color-wise would go. Um, I don't have any journaling really for this layout because it's just um, a newborn picture of my niece and I've done some other ones of her. She's actually four now. <laughs> this one came out of a frame and has been waiting to be scrapped. Um, so where I have journaling on here, um, if you need to do some journaling, a journaling tag or something fun underneath this corner would look great. If you're not doing um, any sort of journaling, then you can pull sort of a bolder embellishment or one that has, I was thinking this one might turn out pretty cute. And I think it will, I'm gonna sneak that under there. So usually before I start tacking stuff down for my embellishments, I will start just sort of, um, laying them out to see where I want them before I tack them down. Usually I don't push down real hard once I do start putting adhesive on either because usually I can pull something back up if I change my mind. But you know sometimes you're stuck with stuff if you push down too hard and then you just have to like it. What I wanted to show you is so there was the punch out sheet in this um, month's kit as well and you can use any of those embellishments if you didn't have the upgrade one. Um, when you punch these out, I don't know if it bothers you, but it drives me a little bit nuts sometimes when you have these little nubs. I don't know if you can see those when you punch something out of a sheet. So I always keep a file on hand for that. This is an actual paper file, but you can use a nail file for this as well. Um, and you just give it a really quick rub right over where those nubs are. And they come right off and you won't see them anymore when you do, uh, you won't see them anymore when you, put them on your layout, which I really, really like. <laughs> so I, it's just the thing I have. I don't love seeing those nubs. So I like to give them a quick little file and pull them off. I have some smaller files too that work just as well. So if you have any sort of paper file or a nail file, it works. If you do it really light, you won't see any distressing. If you like the distressed look, you can give it a harder file and go for that too. Um, so if you end up using stuff out of that punched out kit, that's what I would do. I'm going to just start pulling and layering up and you guys can kind of see my thought process. I do like to bounce around. They always talk about the visual triangle. 
you don't have to go in a triangle shape, but I usually try to sort of balance out by doing opposite corners um, because I, the way this one's done, because I kind of go in a triangle this way, I stuck a title up over here. If you put a title, there's a good chance it's going to look best up over here or instead of these embellishments down in the corner, putting it down over here because it does sort of help to bounce around and draw the embellishments. I like to cluster my embellishments in spots where they're kind of around the photo and drawing your attention to the photo. Because I like to use a lot of pattern papers and mix and match them, you can run into the problem of having a busy layout and seeing the embellishments and seeing the hard work you put into the layout, but not seeing the photos. And so I really, really like to pull in um, embellishments that are going to kind of cluster around and point to my photo. Again, that's my personal, um, what I like doing and goes with my style. And this tag was in one of the packages as well for the upgrade and it's got these sparkly little silver hearts because they punched out of there. I don't think I'm going to need the tag itself. I don't think it's going to work in how I'm layering things um, but I think some of the hearts that got punched out of it are going to be super cute. So it's kind of a nice way to pull in a little extra and again this is a very Valentine's Day themed kit but if you're not a super Valentine'sy person this kit is great for so much other stuff too. I did two layouts now from this and neither one were Valentine's themed layouts. And the, um, I did some treat bags for my kids for Valentine's Day. Those I used the ones that said happy Valentine's and were, were pictures like that for it. Um, I don't want to get too crazy with those add-ons. I am going to pull out this because I just have a hunch that this cute little heart here will actually, I don't want to get too busy, but I think that's going to pull in a few of my colors and some of the glitter. So once I've got that kind of laid out, I'm going to start tacking this stuff down. Um, if you want to add a title at this point and you're following really closely to me, um, the XOXO here might be a really cute title. Sorry, I'm off screen with that. The XOXO might be a cute title. I'm going to hold off on putting it on there because I also don't want to get so busy that my layout's overwhelmed with stuff. So I'm going to start tacking down now and I'm going to do a mix of flat adhesive and this dimensional adhesive again and I kind of just go by feel what I how I think it looks. Um, this will be another place too. I'm kind of pulling open my washi book because I might use a couple strips of washi just to ground under some of my stuff. Now you'll see me tack some stuff down and kind of peel up a corner and shove stuff underneath. It's just how I work. <laughs> you can be a little more organized and get some of it done ahead of time if you like. I'm going to start by sandwiching this You Are Loved because I really want it and I like where it is. I'm going to sandwich it between my layers of paper here. Now remember I used some dimensional adhesive, so what I'm going to need to do on these corners that are touching the back side of my layout, I'm going to put dimensional adhesive. And then this piece that's getting sandwiched underneath, I'm going to use a flat adhesive. I know it seems like a little bit to think about at first, but you'll start to get to be kind of an old hat at going, oh yeah, I gotta mix my adhesives, if you don't, if you're not used to using a lot of dimensional adhesive but it really is one of my favorite ways to just add that little extra. You're gonna see me duck in here. All right. And I have lost my light for today, but uh, tomorrow at some point, probably later in the afternoon, I will make sure to get this layout nice and photographed as well and send it over to Jen so she can get it popped up on website or, or um, on the Facebook page or Instagram or wherever she wants it as well. Um, and I'll probably either pop it up or link to it on my um, Facebook page as well. You can find Scrapbooking Store, Your Honor, on scrapbookingstore.com's um, Facebook page right now. It's the same name for Instagram and you've got the same address then for the website as well. You can find me at Taylor Stamped. I think, I don't know if I introduced myself. I'm Samantha Taylor and I'm at Taylor Stamped on Facebook and Taylor Stamped on Instagram and Taylor Stamped for my blog as well. 
So you can find us in those places. I like this little heart kind of adding. Now because I'm adding it to the photo, I just used a flat adhesive. It does have, um, it is a sticker, but sometimes I add, depending on the company that makes the sticker, sometimes I add a little more adhesive to the sticker as well. Oh, and I wanted to say, if you guys are following along tonight and creating, love to see your photos as well. Um, what you, photos of what you did, you should be able to post them to Scrapbooking Store's Facebook page as like a comment. And we would love to ooh and ah over what you created as well. I think, I mean, I know you can't tell, but the theme of this layout is love, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm gonna add a little bit of these just because I think they're kind of fun and pull in a few more colors. And so you can see how you can use these if you don't have um, the upgrade kit, you can not use a few of these and add a few more of this kind of thing as well. I love this Love You Lots. So I'm gonna add that as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Um, I'm not gonna tuck it under the photo, but because I'm doing half on the photo, half off the photo, I'm gonna use a little bit of dimensional adhesive. If this is too much work for you, you can tack your photo down flat and just use dimensional adhesive on the embellishments. But again, that's your preference because it'll be your layout. I tend to refer to myself as a lazy scrapbooker, so I tend to cut corners whenever possible. All right. And what I think I want, I'm not thrilled with this gap here now that I've done this cluster of embellishments. So what I'm gonna do to fill in that gap is pull, I think maybe, because I'm using a pink here and pink here, I'm just gonna give you guys my thought process on this. Because I have um, pink here and pink here, I don't wanna go necessarily with a really close solid pink wedged in there because you're gonna lose it a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go with this pink and white polka dot. If I pull it off and I decide I don't love it, I'm gonna use those hearts instead. As you can see, I don't get too fussy about making a bad choice, having to pull it off and scrap that little bit. The nice thing with washi tape is washi tape is inexpensive. So what I'm gonna do to kind of ground this here and get rid of that is just slide this under so you don't see where my end started. And I'm gonna do just a little strip right over the top. And the nice thing with washi tape is you can get it where you want it and then just rip it down the way you want. Add a little angle to it, more, I just like it because it fills in this crack a little bit because it was bothering my eye. Sometimes you don't know if something's going to be sort of bugging your eye a little visually wrong to you until you get it there. And so then you just start putting it together. All right. That is everything I've got. So you can have a layout put together really quickly from a sketch. That's why I love them. It takes some of the work away <laughs> from, from putting it all together. The nice thing with the sketch too is if you pick a different set of papers, different colors, different themes, you can put a similar layout together with this sketch and you'll never look at it and go, hey, that looks a lot like your other layout. Because you're using completely different papers, it's gonna look completely different. If you guys followed along and did some of this and used different papers, that's why I said I'd love to see them because you're gonna have a completely different outcome than I did. Just a reminder too, while we've got, well, I've got you here. Another way to change a sketch completely is just to rotate it. So all I did was take my sketch, rotate it this way, and suddenly I've got something I can do with a vertical photo instead if I wanted to. Or just because my pattern papers run that way, and you could also go this way with it too, just as easily. All right, that is everything I've got. Does anybody have any questions about what I did here or things I said? I'll give you guys a minute, but that is everything I have for this evening. And it looks like um, Jennifer put up some of those links for you guys. So you can see, get linked directly to the sketch and to the YouTube page where this will be posted. And when I finish here too, when I hit the finish button, it'll post to the Facebook page so you guys can go back and look. And what did she say about that? Or what size papers did she cut? Um, I would encourage you when using 
a sketch to use it as a guideline. You don't have to be exact. Um, if they use, like I said, this to me in my mind when I was making up the sketch was a four by six photo and then I found a five by seven photo. So it was one of those things where I, I just went with it and kind of did a little bit less embellishments or couldn't use as big of embellishments because my photo was bigger. If you have a smaller photo, you can use some bigger embellishments. So remember that your sketch is a guideline. It doesn't have to be an exact. Well, thanks guys. I really appreciate the nice comments on the layout. It's really been a pretty kit to work with. Yeah, I'd be happy to come back again sometime. And you'll see my stuff on Scrapbooking Stores page too because I love the kits and love creating from them. And you can make so much from a single kit. Like I said, so far I have made treat bags, two layouts, and I still have a chunk of the kit left. And as you can see, I go pretty heavy with pattern paper. So I, I use a lot of pattern paper I'm not using cardstock and just a little bits and pieces from from the kit. I'm using all of the kit. I can probably come back and do one for Easter, yes. <laughs> I am going on vacation at the end of March. That's my only caveat. I'm going to be gone for a week in March otherwise. <laughs> Any other time works. All right, guys, I'm going to hit the finish button on this so it can post to the page and you can go back and watch. If you join late, you can see some of the tips I had in there. If you have any questions afterwards, post them under there. I'll keep an eye out for new ones. Um, feel free to ask. There's no silly questions when it comes to scrapbooking. Everyone has a bit different style. Everyone has a different level, how long they've been doing it. But the awesome thing is that you're getting your memories down on paper and that's all that really matters. All right. Thanks so much, ladies, for, for tuning in. And it sounds like I will probably see you guys again. Have a good evening.